Our next caller is Jasmine from Michigan. Hey, Jasmine, how can we help you? Hi, Sal. Um, so I recently lost 130 pounds. Um, wow. Over yeah, the past year and a half. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm trying to get back into, I guess, a normal lifestyle without gaining back a lot of the body fat that I lost. And I know there's a lot of science behind, like everybody gains back the weight. So I was wondering what your opinions are on that and what I can do to get back to a maintenance sort of eating style and training. Oh, Excellent. This, this pairs really well with the question we just answered. Two yeah. people ago. Yeah. So, uh, first off, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, that is tremendous. That's such a hard thing Thank to you. do. So the fact that you actually did it, uh, I mean, that's a testament to, uh, to, to you. Uh, I need to ask you a few more questions before I can answer uh, this properly. Um, I need to find out, how did you lose the weight? Was this, did you get gastric bypass procedure? Did you have, uh, did you do it through exercise and diet? Like, what were the things you did to get there? It was all diet and exercise. I started calorie counting and then just act, actually being active. Okay. Cool. All right. So, so uh, I'm going to say something that might sound a little bit uh, like I'm not answering your question, but just bear with me. Okay? okay. The most important thing you can focus on to prevent yourself from gaining weight has nothing to do with the physiological things that are going to happen to your body as you watch your calories and exercise and stuff like that. Those are all the mechanistic things that you can work on. And I have no doubt in my mind that you'll be able to do them because you've actually done them already and lost a lot of weight. The thing I'm going to recommend that you focus on the most is working on the behavioral aspect of it, the emotional aspect, essentially the mental part of all of this. So I highly recommend, if you haven't already, investing in a therapist or somebody who specializes in working with the behavioral aspects of not just the weight gain that happened prior to your weight loss, but now what happens now that you've lost the weight. In my experience working with people who've lost a lot of weight, it, they've usually used food as a way to self-medicate. So now what they've done is they've removed that way of self-medicating and through sheer discipline, they're able to lose the weight. But at some point, all those reasons why maybe you had that weight on you in the first place start to creep back in. And so you can have the best plan, the best workout, the best everything in terms of what to do. But if you don't address that, it's going to be very, very, very challenging, if not uh, impossible. Uh, does that resonate okay. with you? Yes, it does. Okay, excellent. Mm. All right, now let's talk about the the, the mechanisms that you're going to uh, work on. Um, however many cal, what, how many calories you're consuming right now? Now that you've lost the weight, what do you? What's your maintenance at? That's what I can't figure out necessarily. I go between eating like around sixteen hundred a day, just because I'm not hungry, to like around twenty eight hundred a day. So it just varies. Do you have any idea of what that would average out to per week? Um, I haven't done the calculations, but probably around like 2,200 or so. Okay. It's actually not bad. No, that's not bad. It's not bad at all considering you've dropped down 130 pounds. That's now, now let me ask you another question. What does your exercise look like daily? Are you doing tons and tons of activity every day? Um, so I have a rebounder trampoline and when I'm bored, I just kind of, um, jog on it for a couple hours a day, honestly. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure if that cardio is influencing what I'm doing at all. What about training? Are you uh, are you following any of the MAPS programs right now? I just finished Anabolic. Okay. Actually. Excellent. And okay. what did you see with Anabolic? Um, my muscles definitely got a lot stronger. I like managed to do, I guess, body recomp in the last year. So it definitely just solidified everything I had been doing. Oh, very cool. Uh, very, very cool. Okay, so you're doing two hours of cardio a day in order to be able to consume uh, 2,200 calories a day. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, in terms of sustainability, in my experience, it's going to be very difficult to maintain that uh, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and beyond because it's a lot of structured, dedicated activity. I would right. recommend trying to make your daily life more active. It's a much more sustainable way of doing things. So maybe getting a step counter, seeing if you can – Increase your steps uh, just throughout the day in your daily routines, um, and then try to replace the rebounding with something like that. Um, Adam asked you the question about uh, resistance training. Stay on that. Nothing positively affects the metabolism like building strength and building muscle. Um, so I would stay on that. Get your body strong. 
get your body to want to build muscle. It'll make it so that you don't need to worry about burning so many calories manually on a daily basis. And even though I can't, I you know I'm not I'm not working with you, and I haven't seen your how you train inside the gym. Uh, my suggestion would be um, to make sure that you are focused on strength over burning, right? So a lot of times when I have a client that has a, a big weight loss goal, it's all about moving and burning mm -hmm. calories. A lot of the messaging that you see in social media and even on TV around weight loss is all about burning, burning, burning. And so a lot of times when my clients would come in the gym, that's how they approach their exercise, their, their sets, their reps, their weight when they're training is they're trying to keep moving and weight. Take some rest periods to settle down and actually your goal should be can I you know can I add five pounds to my bench press can I add 10 pounds to my squat and really kind of reframe your thought process of going into the gym and exercising it's more about building strength building muscle that's what's going to help speed the metabolism up that's what's going to allow you to be able to increase your calorie intake without putting on body fat and so I'm not sure what it looks like right now for you but I know in my experience mm -hmm. with clients a lot of times when they're trying to lose weight it's all about moving mm -hmm. and burning and I got to re I got to reframe what that should look like for them and it's like hey when we go to the gym I'm not concerned about you you know moving around like crazy and in short rest periods you know rest rest for a solid 2 minutes between these sets and let's try and increase that strength and let's increase the weight that you're moving. Okay. Okay. Jasmine, do you mind if I ask you um, a couple personal questions? Yeah. Um, so when you, before you got on this journey um, and you were 130 pounds heavier than you are now, what were the, what, what, what was the food doing for you or what were you eating the food for? In other words, was it, uh, did you find yourself eating because you were bored or sad or anxious? What was that food helping you with? It was probably a combination of all three, honestly. Okay. And what have you replaced the food with? Uh, exercising. Okay. So what you've done is you've, okay, so you've medicated with food before and now you're using exercise to medicate. Does that sound, uh, am I saying that accurately? I would say so. Okay. Yes. Now this is actually a a strategy that I would use with clients. So when they would have, uh, like you did with food, where it was a way to self-medicate either, you know, sadness, depression, anxiety, whatever. And I would actually have them replace it with exercise because it's an easy transition. However, you can't stay there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Be because using exercise in that way is also developing a unhealthy or bad relationship with exercise. And it's also totally not sustainable. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So this is why I, I really, again, I want to stress this. Work with somebody who is uh, experienced and an expert in this field. And I'm telling you, the people that I've worked with, and I worked with quite a bit, uh, quite a few people who've lost over 100 pounds, the ones who were successful were the ones that did exactly what I'm talking about. The ones mm. who didn't do what I'm talking about, I, not a single one of them was successful long term. Yeah. I th yeah, I think you're coming in with the right attitude of trying to find your maintenance. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the biggest struggle with somebody that's lost a lot of weight that I'm uh, helping coach is that temptation of wanting to burn all the calories and make sure their activity levels are really high and they're doing high intensity things. Uh, so, you know, the advice I, I can only just echo uh, trying to sort of refocus on just building your body up and, and getting stronger and focusing on the metrics. So even something like a powerlifting program, something like that, you know, might be something to, to look into. But, uh, you know, once you dial all that in and, uh, you know, you're utilizing food to just, you know, fuel the energy going into the workouts, that's a healthy place to and be. And Jasmine, I want you to know that uh, I want to commend you too. You're kicking ass right now. The fact that you've, you've dropped that down, the fact that you're actually eating 1,800 to 2,000 plus calories, the fact that you're aware that most people put the weight back on, the fact that you're aware that you are using food to medicate, you're already ahead of a lot of people and in the right direction. So you're doing a really good job. Very, very mm -hmm. good job. Thank you. And in, in, in care, take care of yourself like someone you care about. Always think of that to yourself. Remember that, that you are somebody that you care about and you want to treat yourself uh, as such. That'll always guide you in the right direction. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for calling in, Jasmine. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. That's a, you know, you're absolutely right, Adam. Uh, the vast majority of people that were in her situation don't even get close to where she's at. Not even aware. Yeah. Not even aware. And she's, she's uh, I would say, more than halfway there. But again, I can't stress, when you finally get there, 
you're not done. There's another phase you need to move to that can be just as challenging as the previous phase. And, and, and it's necessary in order to maintain what you've already accomplished. Right. Otherwise, if exercise becomes your new drug, uh, and uh, we all know that uh, very well, what that turns into, mm -hmm. um, either A, it can become bad in and of itself, or B, you eventually get sick of that drug and you drop it very quickly and go back to your previous drug, which was you know well, food. Nobody yeah. ever thinks that you can you can abuse exercise and fitness. Right, it's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's a right, good thing. right. It's healthy. I'm exercising, but you absolutely can't, especially if you don't handle the root cause. Mm -hmm. If you got in that situation because, and I love that you went that direction with her because that's what's common, I think, with most people is. That's your outlet. Your outlet is, oh, I'm going to go in the gym and exercise. And, you know, a lot of times it gets people to their goal, but long term, eventually that stuff surfaces. And then you that's where the that's where the binge and the fall off the wagon and then the, all the weight comes back on because you never dealt with what was really causing the weight gain in the first place. Yeah, I'd say the first, the fir in my career, uh, the, I worked with three, initially I worked with three people who lost a lot of weight and they later on gained it back and, and failed. And it was so... For me, it was such an eye-opening thing, and I remember thinking, like, what can I possibly do? And so I had this completely different strategy moving on in my career where when somebody would come to me and would want to lose 100 pounds or 80 pounds or more, um, what part of the structure was that they work with a therapist and that I work with your therapist. When we did that, the success rate was much higher because then it was we're really working on the root. And I'm not a you know I was I'm a trainer right, and I can work with food relationships, I can work with that kind of stuff, but I wanted an expert. Uh, who was a therapist or a counselor who could work with that person yeah, on the side. Get to the heart of it. And it was so much more effective.